All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit record. And we will talk about our professional development norms, which includes being committed, being a leader, focus, improving on student outcomes, implementing learning strategies and programs. We'll be talking about programs related to keyboarding today. Um, being responsible and actively engaging in your learning. We want to be respectful, especially with using the technology at hand and um, taking care of your needs and being safe, but also especially asking clarifying questions to make sure that you are able to get the learning you want out of this. Uh, in addition, if you are able to join us, mute your microphone and turn your camera on if you are comfortable, that helps um, with us seeing who's participating today. And if you have a question or comment, please type it in the chat. And those will be saved for the end of each section. We'll have two primary sections. Just to the, do the compressed time, nature of bite-sized PDs, we want to make sure that um, we hold questions to the end. Your question may be answered. This is the MTSS framework. Um, that's what helps us teaching um, with our teaching uh, structure in Canyons. And we'll be, talk, we'll be referencing good teaching. Um, hi, Lauren. I'm glad you're able to join us today. Um, we'll be talking about these practices um, in passing because good teaching is still good teaching. And when it comes to keyboarding, we will still be doing good teaching as well. So our learning intentions and success criteria for our Bite Size PD today is that um, learning about the Typing Club program specifically and also the best practices for teaching keyboarding. And our success criteria will be knowing you're successful when you can find the reports on Typing Club and also teaching my students proper technique in keyboarding. So this is our agenda for today. We'll start with out uh, with Typing Club. Um, first of all, just a quick, where can I find help? Where can I find more information? Who do I talk to? And also we'll start, we'll look at the reports. And in Rolling Out Typing Club, the biggest thing we wanted to do was to get the information out to, uh, um, to get people into the program. But um, now that we've had students in a couple weeks, you may want to know the data, know what's going on. Um, be thinking about what reports can I get? What information can I share with parents? I'll show you where to find all that information. And then we'll talk about best practices with keyboarding. Um, we'll talk, we'll reference that there are updated standards, um, what those updated standards are. We'll talk about technique, technique and technique. And we'll talk about active teaching in keyboarding. So, um, Lauren, you did join us. I just want to make sure that if you have any questions, just share, please share them in the chat. And as we get to the end of each section, that's when I will go to answer those questions. Let me throw my chat up there just so I can keep an eye on it. Thank you. All right. Typing Club. Typing Club is the new program in elementary keyboarding for the 2021 school year. Um, we did roll this out this fall. Um, we had reviewed several typing programs and um, determined that Typing Club was going to be the one that best met our needs. Um, we wanted to kind of uh, move away some, from some of the things we'd used in the past. Um, we did look at keyboarding online, but we felt we would have some better engagement and, and some other nice features, including multilingual support with Typing Club, which is why we went with that program. Um, we implemented it for second grade this year. There's a multitude of reasons for that. I'll go over some of those right now and we'll talk about a few more later. Um, but one of the biggest reasons is that in second grade, um, we, have, we have a new initiative with Chromebooks. So starting this school year, Chromebooks are now a part of um, we have those available in every second grade classroom. Every classroom second grade on up in elementary school and middle and high school. And so with the introduction of those Chromebooks, students now have more technology access. They also have access to keyboards. And so it would seem prudent to make sure that we are able to teach keyboarding and get students familiar with the keyboards that they now have in their hands and that they can use. 
Um, another reason that we do keyboarding period um, is that it also prepares students for the fifth grade keyboarding assessment mandated by the state. Um, our fifth grade teachers are, are aware of this, but other grades and other people may not be, that, but there is as mandated by our USBE in board rule that there is a fifth grade keyboarding assessment every year to assess those skills. And as we'll see, it's also something that's written into keyboarding standards. So that is a little bit of background on Typing Club. There was a committee that met and um, this was the program that we went with after um, searching various programs that we used. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, I'm gonna actually exit the slideshow really quickly, is where to go for help. I am going to show you that the first place I would go is the help website. And we are oftentimes, I think if you grew up in the 90s, when you use software programs and they had the help menu and said, ask for help here. When you ask for help, it wasn't very helpful necessarily. But a lot of companies have, have gone to great lengths to improve that experience. And I would say Typing Club is among those. So we, I have the link to their um, help website, their support website, and it is actually excellent. So let's take a look at it really quickly. This is their help center. If you'll notice here, it has a tutorial on how Typing Club works. It's about a 25 minute overall tutorial. I know I shared this with our instructional coaches and some of those um, coaches have, have shared those with teachers. So if you want just a great overview of um, the ins and outs, how Typing Club works, um, that is a great place to start. It, it, it references some features that we may, you may not necessarily use in your context, but overall it's going to give you some great support. And you notice it has an overall user guide. It talks about how to manage your class, how to manage your students, Oop, went there a little too quickly, how to get reports, resources, and then just what are some frequently asked questions? So what are some things I can do in my um, course uh, to get the most out of Typing Club or things that other teachers would have asked? Um, well, I'm glad that your students love it so far. That's great to hear. Um, we have a comment from Lauren. So that's the first place I would go. I'd also reach out to your instructional coach. And then finally, you can reach out to me. I, I um, am over the keyboarding project at the district. And my email is there, Jonathan Stewart at canyonsdistrict.org. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, we talked about Typing Club and the big emphasis is we wanted to make sure um, teachers were able to get their students in and start using it. But now that we're in, in a couple weeks and we've started using it, it's like, okay, how do we get information out of this? How do we find out how our students are doing it? How can we get those reports, know our own progress for our own self, and then also be able to report that progress to parents since, this is a, since I know we have conferences coming up. So you will get more inf detailed information on that Typing Club help site. I'm just gonna show you right here where it says reports, you click here, and it has it gives you um, more detailed information on how you can look at reports, including the overall progress of the students. Talks a little bit more about the badging system that the program uses for students. How to look at accuracy. What is practice time? Um, time has come up as an issue. So you know that some, some reports will report um, time in the program, but most reports will talk on, about practice time, which means the amount of time the student actually touches their finger to the keyboard and they track that separately. So I know some teachers have had questions about, I know we've spent time in the program, but with my students, it doesn't show they're actually practicing that much. And that's because it, it, it may not be including the time that they're clicking between lessons or watching video, instructional videos, that sort of thing. Um, you know, they may be playing the game, but they're, you know, if they're slow typers versus fast typers, it might not record as much time if they're typing fast, that sort of thing. So just to understand how they calculate all those things, but it, it can give you more detailed information on those reports. 
what we are going to look at is we're going to start looking at class reports so reports you can get for your whole class and then what reports are available for specific students and you can get some good detailed information there so i have my demonstration class pulled up already you'll just pull up your class in this classes tab right here if you look at all of the different options here you know students instructors many of you are already familiar with assignments that's where you assign the uh, courses that your students will take you'll notice this reports tab so if you click on the reports tab you'll notice several reports that are available you can look at the activity log for all of your students so you can see um, kind of like that running total on the first page what lessons they're working on how many stars they get what lessons each students are passing and I can actually play a lesson. Let me actually get a different one. Let me play th uh, this one. You can actually go in and it will show you for that student what their typing looked like. And, and you can get more detailed information. You can get more of a summary report. This tells you of what it looks like for your whole class. I only have one demonstration student, but it gives you an at a glance for all of your students, how they're meeting their goals, their accuracy, how many times they were successful, how many times they failed, etc. And it gives you those stats for your entire class. You can view reports by week at a glance. Um, you can look at your overall class stats. So how much time they're spending, how many days they've been in the program, what they what they look what things look like on different days. So you might be able to check and you have a practice calendar, especially for students that may may be actually doing this at home. So there's a lot of different um, insights that you can see for your whole class. But we're gonna go and actually look at what what reports I can get for a student. So I have my demonstration student and that's me and I actually did some typing yesterday so we can get a better idea of what this looks like um, the first place you can find reports obviously there's a report tab here but before we go there you'll notice this print report card so if you click that really quick you will get a PDF that downloads and when you download that this is a quick report card it tells how fast they're going how accurate they are Keyboard coverage, meaning what keys are the students learning and how they're doing with their practice time, their strongest and their weakest characters. And I could easily be, see something like this being something that you might share with parents as a, a quick glance during parent-teacher conference. But there are actually some very um, powerful reports. You can access those in two places. You can either click View More or if you go to the reports menu you get a practice time overview that shows that practice calendar that you saw as a view for the, your whole class you can see that for your students or um, if you click the view more on the overview or in this typing performance analysis this gives you the mother load of all the information you could ever want about how your students are doing it talks about accuracy you can do that as a monthly you can do that weekly or you can do it daily it's up to you it tells how fast they're going how accurate they are what keyboard coverage they're doing this is actually my favorite this is a visual of which keys they are strongest and weakest in both by speed and more importantly by accuracy and you can see which fingers they're fastest and slowest at and what whether they're stronger or weaker in certain hands and even thumbs I mean you get a level of detail that that is is quite impressive you can again see the practice time the speed um, you get it, it follows some key indicators um, I don't have this because I only have one student but this is also where you can see how they place in your class you know what percentile they're at highest lowest um, with speed, with coverage, so how many keys they're learning, etc. So again, there's a wealth of information in that student um, report. And so I would just point you to that. Um, that's a great place to get more information for your students. 
Now I want to spend the second half of this talking about keyboarding in general and some best practices. I wanted to point out that another reason we've added second grading to keyboarding is the standards are updated. Um, and they actually added second grade. In fact, they added all elementary grades in the updates they did. So I, these are actually already in the curriculum map. I have this pulled up, so I'm going to point them out here. This happens to be the third grade map, but I included the standards for all grades in all, uh, in all of the grade um, curriculum maps. So you can find it no matter what grade you're referencing. And you'll notice they actually have introduced keyboarding standards for kindergarten through second grade. That is new. Um, prior to this, it was only third grade and beyond. Um, but now it includes all of elementary school. So that is another reason that we included it. The, there are various strands because these are tied to the computer science standards. Zoom in. So they also include things like password, using a mouse correctly, um, and some things that we typically cover in digital citizenship, which is another bite size PD for another day. But standard one has a lot of the things that are specific to keyboarding. One thing it, for anyone that may have uh, taught our third through fifth grade teachers that have taught this before, um, it used to reference specific levels of speed and how fast you were typing. This is no longer part of the standards. Um, they have really de-emphasized speed and really emphasized accuracy and technique. And that's emphasized in the standards. It's also emphasized in what we will see in the fifth grade keyboarding assessments. Let me go back. I like this little quip. In our elementary keyboarding class, we have our top 10 goals for keyboarding instruction. Technique, 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 accuracy and speed. So really in teaching them that proper technique and setting them up to be able to um, be successful and understand that you know if you type right, you'll be able to type faster and you'll be able, it'll be easier for you. Um, and kids don't realize this, but as they go on, they, they avoid certain musculoskeletal issue, have less issues with carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, so there really are some physical effects that, that do affect, and that's why we want to set our students on a path to having good technique in keyboarding. Um, just some examples. We do have that fifth grade assessment I mentioned earlier. Really, to meet expectations is knowing the keys by touch. In other words, when I'm sitting down at my keyboard, I'm putting my placing my fingers in the right spot and I'm using the correct finger to touch and I'm not looking at the keyboard as I'm doing it. And then to get the advanced standard, it's to demonstrate perfectly perfect technique. Um, it's built into the standards, but these are also things that have been taught um, with our previous keyboard chatter. They actually taught that we need to have these um, correct things with technique. Um, and again, speed is not part of the standards or it's not a consideration on the fifth grade assessment. Um, so really even that ultimate assessment is really not looking at speed, it's looking at accuracy and technique. And these are the techniques, um, if you look in the standards you'll find these, these are the techniques we're talking about. Sit up straight, feet flat on the floor, body centered, so where the G and H keys are in the middle. Actually, I, I'm not set up correctly myself. You can't see that. Fingers are curved and oriented to home row. Wrists are straight and elbow naturally at the sides. So it kind of looks like this, right? Eyes on the screen, not on the keys. Correct fingers for used. And that it's a smooth rhythm and quiet hand, so it's not pounding, um, that sort of thing. And these are the elements that you see in the standards. Um, you know, there's some basic things, and these are things that are taught as part of Typing Club. There are things that were taught in the prior curriculum. So I wanted to get to this last point and spend our last few minutes really talking about that. That we want to still have active teaching even though we're using a computer adaptive program to teach keyboarding. It does build in teaching and practicing techniques. That's actually one of the reasons we chose it. It has like an on-screen overlay to, to show 
where the finger placement should be. It talks about these rules about not looking at the screen and making sure you're centered, finding the, the F and J keys, teaching about home row. So it does have that teaching built in. That's one of the advantages we have in the program. And there's still no support for a live teacher instruction. We still are in the classroom. We still want to be involved. Um, it, because just like when we teach Lexia, ST Math, when we use our supplemental programs, they help support what we're teaching, but they don't replace the teacher. They, they do a lot of things to help build, build that fluency, but they st you still need to have that active one-on-one -on -one participation. And I think um, in the last little while, shall we say, I think we've realized that, you know, even though we can try and supplement it with all these other things, there's no, there's no substitute for having that individual interaction and having that hands-on teaching skills and practice. So we know we have this, we have these standards, which are making sure that we type, that we use the proper keys. So for example, I'm using my middle right finger to touch K on the home row, I on the top row, M on the bottom row. Having that type by touch, and the program will help them with the practice, but it's still important to emphasize that. Sitting up straight, feet on the floor, fingers curved, eyes on the screen, wrists at your side. Those are all physical characteristics that we can be looking for. So how do we support that? Well, we go back to the basics. We do explicit instruction and reminder of proper technique. So, you know, again, in, a key, in the keyboarding block, that's not necessarily a lot of time, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. If you think about those things that I mentioned, these are things that you can just set up simple procedures that you can start your class with. Okay, what are we gonna work on today? Feet flat on the floor. What are we working on today, class? Feet on the floor. You know, choral response. Um, we can have those those rules up and and bring those out when we, when we go to our keyboarding time and talk and do reminders for our students, have demonstration of what that proper technique looks like. Um, teach the examples and not examples. Build in those procedures that when we start our lesson, this is how we start. So we know they're starting with, with the um, right physical stance and space, etc. We can start with those things, and then during the lesson, circulate, give feedback, and give praise to students. Point out someone who's doing a great job and and how they're doing their technique. You can do that just like you do with other subjects. You can do that in the middle. As you're wrapping up towards the end, you can point out, you know, you know, Sophie, Julie, and Juan, they were great in how they, how they sat up with a good posture and they had their wrist curve. I want all our students to practice that and so that we remember to do it next time we're doing keyboarding. Um, this also helps Something I, I had some questions about as we kind of got into the program. This also helps with your students um, that have learned bad habits and also can say, hey, I am, I, you know, I'm really good because our students, unlike us, came to school on these things or the iPad that happens to be in my drawer or tablets or all the various devices and the keyboard and how you would type on this looks much, much different than how you would type on this. And so many students think I already know, I already have patterns established, I already know how to do this. Not understanding that, yes, they may have speed to do this, but there is a ceiling to that. Um, not only that, that when you're actually working on a device like a Chromebook, and we can now say that they will have a Chromebook throughout their school career or something like it, 
Um, it may not be a Chromebook for the next seven years or eight years or whatever, but it will be something similar to a Chromebook. And typing on that is very different. And it also helps to point out that ultimately what they're going to be judged on um, when it comes to school is not how fast they go, but how accurate and how good their technique is. Because when it comes to more complex writing instruments, when it, when it comes to not just, you know, texting or social media or messing around with your friends on something like this, but when it comes to actual writing, that let's face it, we're not handwriting, we're writing on a keyboard. I feel like keyboarding is the handwriting of the 21st century. Um, someone said that in a di little different way, and I, I, I really like that quote. But to do that complex writing, you need to have that skill of keyboarding down so that when we get to the fifth grade writing assessment, which of course falls into their ELA standards and falls into the um, final assessment we do in, in RISE and fifth grade and eighth grade and, and all the other things that they will use keyboarding for as a means to say, how well do you write? Um, that is a different skill and, and it's that technique that we want to judge them on because that will enable them to um, have their cognitive, know the skill of keyboarding so they won't have to focus on that and have the cognitive load to be able to focus on the writing and writing their argumentative essay, etc. So I just wanted to put in that plug for do that, do those basic things just like you do for other lessons for keyboarding. Circulate, give feedback, build in procedures, um, point out point out successes, make sure you have those good examples of what that proper technique looks like and be able to give them some of that rationale. I wanted, to, there's a link here for some ideas for encouraging proper technique. Um, these are from a, um, th these were ideas that went with their old curriculum, but quite frankly, they're the, they fall in the oldie book goodies. Um, that's the quote you saw earlier. Perfect technique is every student's goal. And I think for students that struggle, you can say, hey, you may not, um, you may not have, um, you may not be the fastest, but you can have perfect technique. That's something everyone can do. So you can put some reminders on their desk. You can have anchor charts that you have that you bring out during your keyboarding time or that you might have at the practice station. Um, there's name card that they can use as a checklist, something that's on their, you know, that put on their screen or again, like if you use it in a practice station. Um, there, there's a PDF example you could uh, adapt for your own classroom. You could have a certificate, have a king or queen for the day, um, highlight someone again who's displaying that excellent technique so that you're, you know, already the students will compare the numbers, but if you can emphasize that technique, they'll understand that that's the, the key thing. You can have certificates for those as they complete certain levels. Um, they have the badges within the system, but you can do that. And you can also do some informal assessments if you wanted to. Um, again, you have the data on the finger families that you can get. So if, if you have students that are excelling at some, you know, something, or you're just curious, how are my students doing it on their weak hand, whether that's their left hand, the right handed or vice versa if they're left handed. Um, you could do some quick assessments with that just um, again to get the practice and because they they have because I think you are able to access that rich data in the program um, I think that you can be very successful with that so with that um, we are just about out of time so I will just ask Lauren, since you were joining us live, do you have any specific questions or thing you, things you wanted to uh, talk about specifically? I will take that as a no, unless I see something pop up in the chat. Okay, th and she says, no, I don't think so. I really liked learning about the reports. I I'm glad to hear that. I thought that would be kind of a next step for many people. Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you for your time if you end up joining us virtually um, at a time of your own choosing. And thanks for joining us. Again, I'll just remind you, 
Um, um, this is where you find Canyons U, where you can find all sorts of helpful tips and tricks for all kinds of things, technology, and it's also growing to include more with uh, curriculum areas. This is where you find our Bite Size PD page, um, where you can find the, the link to this and any other Bite Size PDs we have done. And if you're interested in getting a, um, a 0.5 relicensure credit, this is the link to the survey. You can click on that and it will, and you can do this for this and other bite size PDs, and it will help you accumulate those relicensure points that you need. And with that, I think we're at our time. Thank you again so much for joining us, uh, Lauren, and for those who will join us later virtually, have a great day and keep on keyboarding.